Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. This is a picture of Mount Rainier I took just the other day, and the sun was shining on it, and it's just a gorgeous picture of what it looks like in the wintertime. It's all covered with snow, and we have all kinds of beautiful forested areas here where I live, and Nico and I like to go for walks on all the beautiful trails that we have around here and there's all kinds of adventures to be had and we surely have a great time together and we like to look at all the gorgeous uh, flora and fauna we have all kinds of trees in the pacific northwest as you can imagine this one here is a cedar tree we've got lots of cedar and that's a cedar and over here we've got a really pretty white birch isn't she gorgeous and then of course we've got all kinds of western pine those are western pine trees and there's another birch and so it's just heavily forested all around here so let's go take a walk and find a good place to sit down and have a nice little discussion amongst our friends the trees all right it's like 52 right now. Close to about 50 degrees. We say degrees. We're in the States. <laughs> I don't know what that is in Celsius. I don't, you know? It would be like 20 something. Yeah. But I it's think. really good to just get out here in nature and you can hear the birds and the occasional motocross bike. It's really great to get back to nature. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you <Really>? know. <clears throat> The sights and the smells and you can hear the different birds. The sound of silence. Bliss. It is a type of bliss to allow yourself silence well I mean in a way that's kind of sleep which is a form of meditation yeah it's sleep. a different brain wave sleep like and being awake yet in a meditative state of bliss where you're just allowing yourself to enjoy I kind of feel like sleep is hello do you see that what <laughs> there was a little insect flying insect of some kind that was just hovering yeah, here I did for a second. checking I saw me it out fly away. <laughs> that's wild but what i was saying was i think sleep is meditation it just is a it's like a natural way our body just automatically does it i feel like that's what it is well it makes we, sense to me yeah and we are a quantum computer a biological quantum computer is, that does need to be reset just is, like any other computer it is a deep state of just meditative state i don't know yeah it's resetting it. resetting the it's low power mode the brain waves <laughs> have to reset everything needs a reset and a rest and uh physiologically and anatomically speaking when you sleep that's when your cells repair but when you come to the woods and you allow yourself to just sit in silence and take in the sights and the smells, sounds. It's truly organic. It's truly organic and you, you touch the, <laughs> and feel the leaves and the bark on the trees and realize that we truly are all one and Nature depends on us and we depend on it. And the mutual respect that uh, I feel and have and the love I feel in my heart for, for Mother Nature is, is immense. And I think that's important for our survival. I mean, if you think about that one too, the forest has a whole energy to itself. It's a whole lot different than just one tree. People work exactly the same way. One singular person, yes, can have lots. However, if you have the entire crowd of people, it's a whole other energy. Yeah, community. A collective. The collective, exactly. It's a community. 
And, you know, I was studying trees and the other day and I was realized, actually it's been a few years ago, um, but I, I brush up on it every once in a while because it's so curious to me, the communities that trees actually have. There's a, there's a whole hierarchy there. It's a uh, matriarch. There is a grandmother tree uh, that literally uh, can s speak to the other trees. And uh, the curious thing is their mode of communication is through fungi and all the different kinds of mushrooms and funguses and uh, lichens and all those kinds of uh, plant life that's in the fungi species, I guess. I don't know the correct terminology. That, that, that is what allows the forest plant life, especially trees, to communicate. It's their telephone lines. Isn't that cool? And so there's a symbiotic relationship going on there right under our noses that we're not even aware of. And the uh, grandmother tree or the matriarch can send signals for a long, long ways away. I don't know exactly how long away, but like if one of another tree is diseased or in stress, she can actually send a signal through the fungi underground. There's a whole system with their roots and the fungus that's in the soil. And she can send a signal to release chemicals to help protect that tree against whatever the invader is, whether it's an insect or, looks or like, disease. Looks like we got a hawk in that sky. Oh, beautiful, a hawk. Hold on guys, I gotta show you. I want to get the tree out of the way. I can't find it. Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, there's that little flying hover unit again. Where is the bird? It's right above us. It's moving that way. Yeah. I've lost it. Finally. No, it's just the, I can't <laughs> find it. Uh. <laughs> the yeah, the people are going to say fake news. Yeah, no, there was I no hawk. I was literally like looking right at it. I'm like, it's right there. I'm staring like, at it forever and I'm like fumbling with the phone. Just a minute. <laughs> Sometimes I've noticed that too. We're so camera ready these days. That Except when you really oh, yes, see something spectacular like yes. a hawk that's hunting the, right above your it's, head. It's kind of interesting because there's like this fine balance. Sometimes trying to capture it ruins the experience. Sometimes it, when you just simply just watch it and just nothing else, and it's just you and that. You know what, Nico? You are so right. Here I was busy trying to capture the hawk on my camera for you guys, which is cool, right? But yeah, I missed it. I could have just left the phone alone and enjoyed the moment. <clears throat> the reason why I wasn't... Uh, too upset about that was because I am so blessed that I live in an area that they're just literally abundant everywhere so it, so it'll just be a minute and it'll be back they're everywhere here yeah so. and I've noticed that too is sometimes they'll circle around in a little area and then they fly away and then they come right back to the same area yeah well they have their hunting like some grounds. big figure eight that they're doing or something where they'll hang out in one area and then they loop back way over there yeah it might even be just right there and we can't see it and it's just circling. Yeah, the trees are so tall right here. It's He literally could just be over there another part of the sky right by us and we wouldn't see it. I'm sure there's tons of tiny rodents hanging out way in those grasslands out there. Yeah. There's just a bunch of brush. Oh, I love taking slow deep breaths in this rich oxygen, oxygenated atmosphere. It's just it's different you know when you get out of your house um you really can tell at least i can tell the difference it's cleansed it's cleaner you know you might keep a, a nice house and maybe your house is clean but really uh the carpets the furniture the curtains the what, what you name it um even the radiation that's coming off of all of your appliances um yeah the atmosphere gets stagnant and full of static. Unless and you regularly clean your house, not just physically, but spiritually cleanse it all the time. 
you can maintain a positive environment in a building. You uh, can, but there's but nothing like grounding still, yourself in nature. Yeah, there's nothing still, can replace that. It's still artificial. It's still artificial. And I was going to say, even being around all those EMFs, all of those uh, artificial um, interference. interference patterns, vibrations... They come out of your microwave and your coffee maker and your stove and your everything you own, your television, your computer, certainly, your cell phone, certainly. All of these uh, radio waves and 5K and all of this stuff that's going 5G. on. 5G. <laughs> 5K. That's a marathon. Yeah, that's it. The marathons are, yeah, are no. in our airwaves. <laughs> yeah, it's running right at you. Running right at you. <laughs> 5K. This fresh air is getting to me. <laughs> yeah, it's an oxygen high. It's an oxygen high. That's it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But so anyway, coming out into nature is grounding. Literally, you discharge all of that static from your body. And so it's healthy for you to get outdoors and especially to be amongst trees. Among. Amongst and among. Whom and whomst it concerns. Sus. <laughs> the grammarly of it all. <laughs> well, I suppose so. And now we've got a... Yeah, the biological... The biological... Uh, forest plains. Forest plains overhead. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've got like an, the hawk, you can't film it. It's not possible. We've got an international airport. Would you say about... I don't know, 30 miles away, 30 to, 40 miles. 30 to 40 miles away from here. So occasionally we'll get a plane going over. I'm not quite sure the exact distance. Yeah. A ways away, but not too far. Yeah. Enough to enter your video on occasion. <laughs> yeah. But at least it's not as often as the dirt bikes. <laughs> well, I mean... Even that's still kind of uncommon in this, right in this little area. We just so happen to run into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because I wanted to upload a video, and so then everybody grabs their dirt bikes in the neighborhood. Well, no, I think that's and funny, too. And then start like, their chainsaw projects. No, every time. <laughs> my experience with these areas, whenever I go out here, is always like a complete silence, nothing. And I'm all telling you, like, no, it's good. There's literally nothing. And, and then I'm right like, yeah, go, let's go video. Yeah, right when we go is dirt bikes. I'm like, the oh, minute I not, bring my equipment out. It's not like that. Like, I swear. <laughs> and then I have to say, I knew it. Fake news. <laughs> Actually, we're blessed right now. It's, it is pretty quiet. Sort of. Not too bad. Eh, yeah. The oxygenated air. You ever listen when it's super duper quiet and it sounds loud in your ears in the silence? Yes. Does that make sense to you? I've said that to some people and they didn't know what I meant. It didn't make sense to them, but it does to me. It gets really loud. The quieter it gets, the louder it gets in my ears. Almost like a like a crowd going. <sighs> yeah, no, I know exactly. And what when I was mean. little, I would say. I can hear the molecules, and my mom would say, what? <laughs> um, uh, what I think that actually is, is uh, the blood vessels in your ear. You're hearing literally... Sometimes I can hear my heart beat, you know. Well, yes, but... But I'm talking about the little dull roar. I, I know, it. I hear it too. You do too? And I think that might actually just be... Uh, yeah, blood vessels in your ears. I don't know for certain if it is. It could be a combination of maybe a few things. Um, what is that one thing that's called where you hear a constant noise? In one oh, of tinnitus. Ears? Yes, that. That's terrible. It can, it Some can people also be, suffer with that. It can also be mild forms of that, I would suspect. Maybe. It, it can be just damage to hearing. It can also be that. Your nerves it could misfiring. Be, yes, it could be a lot of things. I think it's, but that, what you're explaining, because I've experienced it many times too, uh, is an extremely common thing. 
people's hearing gets altered all the time. Think of all the rock concerts we went to when we were young. <laughs> that might have yeah. damaged our hearing. I still hear the crowd. <laughs> I mean, even something like listening to loud headphones or yeah. just anything. So we have to pay, uh, really pay attention and take care of our senses because they really are our connection to this vibrational world, uh, universe. And so our hearing, when you go into sacred places like a forest and you listen to the silence and you also think about other sen your other senses and how you might use those. I was also um, studying about there are those who can use their sight to do different things in forests. You know, there's a lot of legends of um, like the Irish folklore of the little people and seeing things in the forest. And I often wondered if, if um, you know, those were either sentient beings or you're using your senses to actually tap in. If you stare long enough at something, are you tapping into another vibrational dimension? Is that what you're doing? You're exercising your senses in another way. On that sort of topic, I think it would make to me perfect sense that a forest would be rich in spirit since every single tree if it's a living entity there's tons of spiritual energy that's just flying everywhere because trees and plants typically communicate through the air in almost everything well and also underground like i was saying yes. through the fungi through earth and air plants communicate and everything has a vibration right i suppose through even water sometimes so carillion photography which is where you can actually see the vibrational field around a living thing um otherwise known as your aura plants have that too well, yes and so um if you think of it that way when you're sitting in a forest if you can see this area behind me um with Carillion photography, I wonder if it would just be a massive orchestra of communication going on, all the vibrations. And so just having your vibration in it, you can't help but sink to it like a tuning fork. Mm -hmm. Your vibration automatically harmonizes with it. Well, it's the same. Which is healthy. Remember what I was saying about how one person versus a crowd is just different energy? Yeah. Being in a crowded area with people feels different than being by yourself. There is a definite just difference. Different and energy. You don't even have to be spiritually inclined really at all to even sense it. It's so innate in our ability. Yeah, you don't even have to know about these things. You can you just, feel it. You just already... I feel like you could talk to anybody about the idea of, doesn't a crowd feel different than being by yourself? Right. I would guarantee everybody would say yes. And so if you allow your, sons, your senses to think about that in that same way about trees and other living things, they're in a crowd. And I always think about the way we uh, uh, work our lands, the way we log, and when we replant. These beings need each other just like we need each other. And when we replant our forests, I'm hoping that that they understand this concept that you can't just put all the same species in one spot at all the same age it doesn't work as far just, as I know. just like humans you got to have different creeds different races different species different colors different ages it takes a village to to thrive and to be healthy and trees are the same way as people yeah I, unless you really took the time in doing what you're saying and specifically um, plant trees in specific ways. Tree, forests and all that, they, you can't really just create it unless you do it that way. It has to just kind of occur naturally. Like stuff They naturally just, know what to do. Stuff I'm... will just be growing it where it needs to grow because it will just naturally grow like that. And certain trees will just assume certain areas and it just turns into But what I'm that. what I what I'm proposing and what I've been studying is that it isn't just random. There's actually purpose to it. Yes. Because of the hierarchy, the grandmother trees decide. They actually can decide to help one to help another tree that's dying or not. They can actually send poison over to one and finish it off. 
and uh, the biologist, or not biologist, excuse me, um, what's the plant scientist? Come on. Oh, brother. Like a, Herbologist? No. I mean, that's still... A triologist? That's no. still biologist. <laughs> no, like, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, oh, my lord. It's a big cut right here. Big cut. As soon as we think of it, we're gonna go, oh, brother. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, they already they already know all this communication stuff is going on, but I think a lot of the scientific world, especially the the not the the non scientific world, the regular Joe, you know, the regular person, has no idea of this hierarchy and these sentient beings have their own world, their own communication, their own community going on. And uh, we're not aware of that, and so we don't we don't treat them with respect. It's almost like <laughs> I hate well, to say it, whatever you throw you throw a bunch of people in of the same race into one area. What do you call that? Segregation or, or a reservation, like we did to the Native Internment. Americans internment. I don't know. People would maybe scoff at that. Come on, we're talking about trees here, but really. What if they really are sentient beings? Well, then are you going to say the same thing? Should we treat them with a little more respect, especially if we're going to take their lives and use their wood? We should reforest with respect and let them have their families, not separate them and like only one kind here and they're all of the same age. And I know it would take a lot to reforest carefully and selectively like have a little bit of cedar have a little bit of maple have a little bit of whatever so you mix it all up yeah and that's that's the, thing. the responsible way well, that's the thing it costs too. more right it costs more there's so many different depends on where it's located to is it owned by the city is it somebody's land like there's so many factors Who's deciding and yeah. most of the time i would think that Many people don't even think of that. They think if you just replant it, it's fine. It's fine. And We're just going to cut it down for paper and wood again anyway, so why do we care? Well, not just that, but too, I also think... Um, <laughs> you know, I have to interject. You know what ruined me? Harry Potter. That one scene where they pull the plant up and it starts screaming. You grasp your mandrake firmly. You pull it sharply up out of the pot. Oh, the chamber, yeah, that chamber got me. of secrets. That I got think. me, you know. That... When you're an empath and you see things like that, it literally imprints on you almost like, you know, traumatic syndrome where you're just like, oh, that called. got me. <laughs> and so now like... I think about that when I come out and I see real plant life, real trees. And I, and I now, I treat them differently in my yard. I talk to them. I've made relationships with all, what is it, three or four trees I've got. I've got a kind of a small yard. And uh, they've actually thrived and done much better since I started talking to them and, and actually making a relationship with them, communicating. I'll go out and do yard work and I'll literally say, how are you? It's good to see you. You're so pretty. Thank you so much for blessing our yard you know with it's, your presence it's kind of interesting trees don't really speak in the way we would speak they don't use words they speak purely purely in emotion i'll tell you how it spoke after i did that i started doing that two years ago speaking to my trees and just to kind of as an experiment right just to see if it would really do anything and the next year the dogwood had fruit all over it and it never fruited like that before. And then this last year, this very last summer, it was just covered in fruit. I had so much fruit, I didn't know what to do with all of it. And it was, my, uh, my mother used to live in my same house before me and she had that dogwood for years and years and it never did have any fruit. I start doing experiments on it by talking to it and giving it love on purpose. It's fruiting like crazy. And I did the same thing. I'm trying to think what was the other thing I the did it to. Tree. The maple tree. The maple tree had babies for the first time. There was little babies coming up underneath it. 
not that I needed more trees, but it actually grew bigger, longer, more beautiful. Yeah, it was prettier than it had ever been, this beautiful Japanese maple I have in the front. It truly made a difference. I could see it with my own eyes. Michael agreed. Grandma came to visit this year and she agreed that it was definitely an improvement. Looked like I had fertilized the heck out of it and really I did nothing other than just an experiment where I started talking to it. And every time I go outside, I purposely greet it. Even, even if I don't say it out loud, I say it up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should try it at home. I do it to my plants in the house now too. And my amaryllis is blooming twice this year. Now they're supposed to bloom once, at least the one I own only blows bl blooms at Christmas time, and it bloomed at Christmas. And lo and behold, it's blooming again now, first time ever. I've never had it bloom twice, but this year I poured all kinds of love on it. I talked to it every day. I would touch it and say oh you're so pretty gosh thank you so much for being in my home and it's amazing it's blooming again check it oh, out it man plants, picture. plants are way more intelligent than people realize they sense everything they've done experiments on it they can actually <clears throat> they actually did this one experiment it's really amazing i'll see if i can dig up some of the stuff on it where <clears throat> They measured the vibrations coming off of a, I think it was a philodendron. I don't remember now what it was, but um, they were measuring and, and then they had uh, in the test, they had a subject say, I'm going to prune that and cut it way back. And the vibration at just the thought of those words changed on the plant. Like it was scared, like it knew it was about to be cut. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, they repeated it and it happened every time. And they did it with, um, I think they also did the reverse where they would say it and then say, never mind, I'm not going to prune it, I'm not going to cut it. And then the vibration would relax and go back to a normal pattern. Like the plant could feel the intention that it was about to be hurt. I mean, that's bizarre. That is wild. And that comes back to that scene in Harry Potter. Like they do have feelings. <laughs> Well, yes. So, yeah, whenever we come out here, I always make sure and, and thank them. Because, really, they're, they were here before us, and they're going to be here after us. And it's really their land. Oh, well, hopefully. <laughs> we're just blessed to share it with them, and, and we need to be thankful about it. I love it after. Nah, this is really nice out here. I'm so glad you got to come with me today out here. Thanks for joining me, Nico. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I Thank like you, Trees. Thanks for allowing us out here with you today. I wish the hawk would come back. Well, Hawk's doing its thing. Doing its thing. Hmm. It's got other corners of the forest to explore and hunt. So that's cool. In fact, I love hawks and I love all of this wildlife that we have out here. We really are blessed to live out here in the Northwest. Too cool. Hopefully you guys get a chance to get out and enjoy the great outdoors and take some slow deep breaths and breathe in that wonderful oxygen and reconnect with nature. Ground yourself, get rid of some of that static that's collecting in your body. The negative ions. The negative ions, those stray electrons. <laughs> They're getting cooped up in the winter time. Got to get out. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Oh, and yeah. it's been groovy. <laughs>